So let's wait a little bit. So that people come. As we wait, let's make some silence first. Let's wait just a little bit more so that more people can come. <clears throat> so hello everyone, welcome. Has been some time that I've not been here. And today I come to present the spiritual rebirth. What is the spiritual rebirth? What it's all about? So for those who have been uh, following the satsangs as long as they have lasted, you know that I've been here for a while. And then I stopped satsangs for about one year and a half or more. And I'm sure nothing much has changed so far because of, well, of the, how the things are at this moment. So the spiritual rebirth is an opportunity for those who are seeking liberation, God communion, to be able to move um, consistently through obstacles that the even the majority ignore that they exist. So some of you have listened a little bit of what is the spiritual rebirth, others didn't that are entering here. So the spiritual rebirth is a sacred process. <clears throat> it's a sacred process. Uh, that lasts 77 days to, through God communion, through intense spiritual practices, to erase or being forgiven by all the sins of this life and past lives and the seeds of all sins. But what does this mean concretely? So many of you have been in a long, for a long time into the spiritual path, uh, some more intense than others. And those who have been intensely on the spiritual path, they know that it has not been easy because progress is very slow. 
and that has many reasons reasons that uh, usually seekers are not aware some are aware but not on the extent of the implications of those obstacles so it doesn't matter which spiritual philosophy you are following it doesn't matter if it is Advaita, Yoga, whatever it is the philosophy that you're trying to bring and to transform into your heart to embed in it so that you can be uh, transformed by it or liberated or whatever the, the choice of words is it has to go through the same process because the laws of the universe are still there and it doesn't matter if it is a philosophy of transcendence or of union it is the same because if you are denying existence through a non-dual philosophy you still have to do it because of your ignorance because of your attachment because of a lot of things so denying it is a way of transcending but um, but still you have to go through all the things you're still uh, trapped in this uh, dreamlike existence and this dreamlike existence has its own rules and this is unavoidable so one of the things that plays a very big role let me just see if I can clear here the Probably not. No. Okay. So one, one of the things that has many implications is actions. Actions bind you to the universe, to creation. Mm -hmm. So good actions or actions that are aligned al align with Dharma, with God's laws, they bring you closer to God, they make you grow spiritually and if you don't achieve self-realization then you move on to higher spheres of this creation and experience the good fruits in the good of good sense in uh, experience of your actions. This good and bad is just about the taste of the experience because either good or bad it's still experience so bad actions those who are who are countering who go against god's laws they take you to lower regions to reap the fruits of that and to purge yourself from those uh, self-harming actions but actions with which are made with the consciousness of the doer always continue the dream you continue uh, trapped in the wheel of sansar you cannot escape it as you have the consciousness of doer and to go beyond this consciousness of, of doer then also this is the the spiritual practices the spiritual path in whatever philosophy it is so I'll, there's an austere part which is the part of transcending human limitations and the more you can uh, the, co the more you can focus on that the more you can live that the more intense it becomes and it starts burning the karmas and without burning the karmas neutralizing them burning them in the fire or uh, or the fire of meditation or the fire of wisdom you are still trapped and those fruits have to come they have to be experienced in this life or other lives so these are actions that bind you doesn't matter if it is a dual or non-dual philosophy it is the same and if you deny it you can deny it you can affirm it but all these things will have to, to happen either you're aware of it or you're or not aware of it so by being by observing from some time uh, 
seekers working intensely in their spiritual paths, majority not so much, but those who were working seriously, it becomes clear that things have reached a point that it's not possible. Uh, even those who dedicate a lot, they cannot move uh, further very much. Those who, have, who are not completely dedicated, who have a worldly life at the same time that they have spiritual practices, these don't even perceive this because time is robbed very fast. You see, time is what you have more precious and it is robbed very fast. And those who are distracted, they don't even perceive it. And there's another kind of actions. I didn't, I didn't finish these actions. So in these, let's call them uh, adharmic actions, actions that go against dharma, actions that go against the laws of God. So there are simple actions like this that go against God's laws. And they are sins, and they are there are offenses also. So these terms they are not they are not very um, commonly used these days because, in a sense, in for the the spiritual seekers, the modern ones. So this belongs to religion. And yes, there has been a lot of things around it, but that doesn't mean that it isn't there. So there's bad actions and there are sins, which is worse than these bad actions. And there are offenses, which are even worse than sins. Because sins in the way can be purged in the most inferior regions or infernal regions. But offenses, it is more complicated. An offense, so sin is going against the laws of God. It's going against the laws of your soul, of your divine nature. This is what it means. So people think about God's laws as something dogmatic, something that you follow without understanding it, and it has to be like this and like this. Yes, in a way it is like this because people have forgotten what is um, what is the essence of it? So only the form has remained, the content has disappeared. But the laws of God is the path towards God. And going against the laws of God mean, means going against the laws of your soul, which is a speck of God, of the same nature that God. And that is... It's an aggression towards your divine being. It's an aggression. Also, uh, makes you become more distant from God in many ways. So, normal negative actions, let's call it like this for a better lack of, uh, of a word, they send you to, they have consequences after the death of the physical body where you're going to move because you're going to reap the fruits of these actions. And even here, as you are embodied, there's also this reaping the fruits of actions. But there's another aspect which has been lost through time or not given the, the, the proper importance of it. Because religions have been uh, repeating again and again about the sins and all of this and in modern spirituality this has been put aside everything is peace and love there is none of this and sins is just it's just something that it has no big meaning nobody thinks a lot about these things this has been lost but it shouldn't because this is one of the most important aspects of the quest of a, a spiritual seeker so religions have lost it, it's not that have been lost it has been made by people the way that people take these things as something relative relative not so important not so important but there was if those who can remember in the old days 
religious people would be very strong against uh, sins. And in some religions, uh, they would, they would um, speak about a devil and demons and all of this. And for many, it appeared that it was about spooking people about this. But it really was not the case. But again, this happens with all philosophies, with all religions, with all uh, spiritual movements, that the meanings get lost with time. So in, this, in these laws of the universe, in this, in this world, in what you are experiencing, well, if you reflect a little bit that you are an incarnated soul, that you are a divine being, how can, they, how can it be that this world is for worldly purposes? It doesn't make sense because it is not. It is not. There's something else being played here. Something else being played here. And the purpose of life is God-realization. And there are obstacles, there are difficulties in this, it's kind of a cosmic play, where you have many, many attractions, attractions to, uh, to seduce you and to move you away from God. And you have your consciousness, your inner feelings, uh, you have divine beings that intervene, you have masters, all of this, sending a message, sending directions. So you have both callings at the same time. But in this moment, these both callings, they are not perceived because everybody knows that there are angels, deities, or less, everybody has this clear vision seeking the light. Mm -hmm. but there is also the other part the other part so there's this image uh, which is common in the west about the angel and the devil on the shoulder speaking into your ear and which one do you follow but what does this mean so the path of consciousness so following the voice of consciousness takes you to god Listening to the devil in your shoulder makes you protect everything which is wrong, which is bad, which is the non-self. Temptation is about crossing the lines of, of the, the laws of God. And where does this take you? It takes you to demons. So this is the, the part that uh, it's not much talked and there's a reason for it because Nobody wants to talk about demons, it's not a good subject. But as things are going, as the world is today, it is a subject that needs to be talked, needs to be addressed. Because or else seekers don't stand a chance in the, in, because the rules of the game that you are playing, the game of enlightenment, they are much broader than it seems, than you think. And there's many things involved. So, deities, angels, call it the way you like, and there are differences also, but you can also use the same term for both. They point the, the path towards God, they take care of creation, they protect seekers against these evil forces, dark forces, ignorant forces, let's call it like this. And... Demons have a different purpose. They have the purpose, not all, not all, but these ones that we are talking about, the ones that play this part, they have the purpose of power over the world in many different ways. And there is a, this image of the, of the angel and the, de and the devil on the shoulder. This is like a, a representation on what happens in your consciousness. So you have temptation, temptation and guidance. Temptation from one part, guidance for another part. 
and one is pointing you the path towards God. The other one is pointing you to sense pleasures, to all these things, and the more the better. And, and as you cross a little bit the line, there's a, 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 a will to go a little bit further. That voice keeps pulling you to go into further bad actions and then sins and all of this and going further and further. And there's a reason for this because you have a divine protection, a divine protection, which is natural. So these beings cannot access you because you are a divine being with a divine protection, you're moving towards God. Unless, unless you are going against your divine nature, against God, by going against the divine laws. And as you sin, this is why there is temptation, is to make you sin, because this cannot be done if you're not forced. So if you're not pushed, if you don't use your free will, it, it, it doesn't count. But if you use your free will, so temptation is there, you accept it, and you move, you're entering sin. By entering sin, your divine protection gets weaker. By getting weaker, demons can access your bodies. Slowly, they will be able to access them, and bit by bit, or depending on what was the sin, the intensity, or if it was an offense, so an offense is the sins that are, that are done in the spiritual environment with uh, the knowledge about God, the knowledge about spirituality, the knowledge about the divine laws. So this becomes an offense. This is very simple explanation. So, but as you sin, your sins are giving authorization to demons to be able to access your bodies. And in the old days, this was very visible how it happened. So if someone would be invaded by a demon, usually the demons in those times were not very sophisticated. Those that are known, those that are known and, and those cases of demonic possession, which is uh, known by people, this was like was very visible because these demons were brutes. They didn't, they had no sophistication. But in this time where we, where we are, and even back then, those who were sensitive, they could perceive if someone had demons or themselves or whatever, because there was a lot of signs, a lot of changes. Okay, so YouTube crashed here. We are talking about this subject. So all these things got. Okay, so not possible to open YouTube. So let's continue on Instagram. Just letting people hear. No. No, no, what this here? No, I cannot say anything to anyone. So YouTube crashed permanently. Let's see if Instagram can hold this. So as you continue to sin, you continue to open space for the demons. This is a very long subject. I will not be able to cover it all. But as they access your bodies, uh, and there's different kinds of bodies, different kinds of accesses, then your spiritual efforts, they start to become fruitless. And as they enter, they will push you more. Your, your urge to commit sins will increase a lot. The urge for offenses will increase because you will be uh, forced in, in a way. You still have your free will, but you get less and less uh, free will as they move innerly into your being. So, 
And demons also use technology. Now this can be a long conversation also. So it's very difficult to perceive uh, if someone has demons or not. Some people know. Uh, but something that people can see is those who experience attacks in their spiritual practice, some, most of the times, these, and, and they continue to, uh, to experience these attacks, this is clear that there is access. But if there are sins, there is access. And there is two purposes for, for demons to access a human body. Food, food, they feed on suffering. Huh? So they create suffering to people and they feed on that. They put people fighting with each other. There's, they are always on the background. And the second is instrument in their cause. So these are the two purposes. So we live in a moment where, where sins are normalized, where the spiritual seekers don't pay attention to this, and this is not innocent. This is design. So anyone that starts in a serious matter the spiritual path, starts receiving intense attacks from different situations, enormous difficulties on themselves. And I'm talking about those who are doing it sincerely, in a strong way, because the majority is distracted by the new age uh, nonsense, in a way, uh, nonsense, of everything is just light and love. It is, but it doesn't have that meaning. It doesn't have the meaning that naive seekers gifted this and there is responsibilities and there are laws at work and it becomes clear it has been clear for a, a long time that just with this the, the the spiritual practices the normal spiritual practices that people have access they don't stand a chance and you see you look at your own situation and it's very difficult to the ideas of um, an ascetic life, for example, uh, intense spiritual practices of 10 hours a day meditation, complete dedication to the spiritual path, serving, dedicating your life to service. All this is, is something which is not a reality for the majority of seekers. The majority of seekers are completely attached to sense pleasures, dependent on everything like any, like a normal worldly people, but you have your spiritual practices, light one usually, light ones, and, and that is the, 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 the image of the average seeker of truth. And this is not by accident. This is because there are forces that you are dealing with that you don't understand, that you don't even know that they are there. So the spiritual rebirth is a sacred process that comes to give as an opportunity for those who are really in the quest for God-realization. Self-realization, God-realization. And it is a sacred process that lasts 77 days. It is very intense. So if you're not serious, you cannot go through it. And it is about coming before God with all of your sins to be forgiven, showing through your austerities, your dedication, your God communion, that you are serious and that you are not going back into those sinful actions. And so that these sins can be erased. And if there are demons already there, in this sacred process, these ties will be cut. If you reach the, the depth of regret which is needed, then 
this connection will be cut. For those, this is an opportunity for those who want to uh, seek God exclusively. Because in reality, I hear many people complaining about this situation like it was unfair. But the truth of the matter is, there's not many things to do in this world. Either you're seeking God exclusively or you are seeking demons. So your time and your free will count. And until now, there was some, some ways of dealing with demonic possession, but that doesn't work anymore. Or it, because it's a very deeper subject than that. Because as long as there are sins, they have the right to enter your bodies, to use your bodies. And the majority of people is used in demonic agendas without knowing, thinking that they are following your, their, their, just their will. But it's not, especially those who are in the spiritual path. Because in, for demons, from what they're, in, in their perspective, there's only one thing that makes their strength weaker, that uh, makes it difficult, their agendas, and that is the presence of real seekers of truth. Just by their vibration, as their vibration gets higher, it influences uh, the overall vibration of, let's call it, of this world. And this reduce, reduces the demonic influences. And influence is very important because there's the access towards the individual and there's the access towards humanity as a whole by the number of those who are in these demonic lines that happen in many ways. Most, most uh, especially seekers of truth that have a spiritual calling, they are recognized in these astral planes and followed and bullied so that they don't have any conditions as they get to adulthood to bring their light into this world, that they become very damaged psychologically, physically, whatever is needed so that they don't have a chance to bring their light to the world. So the spiritual rebirth comes to give a hand to those who want to... Uh, it's not about demons, it is not, but it is in a sense because it is about sins. And sins, the, the keepers of the sins are the demons. So there are divine laws that forbid, of course, there's always transgression and there's punishment for that transgression also. So according to the divine law, if there are no sins, they cannot enter your body. They cannot use your body. If there are sins, they can. So we, we hear on the stories of, of the scriptures of India about sin, sins, and purification of sins, and removing all sins. But this aspect, this aspect, either has been lost in the translations, or it's not really there. Not sure, because I didn't read them all. So, and India is a very vast treasure of spiritual knowledge. So probably there is something about that. But sins have to be uh, burnt. Usually it is through the actions and the experience, the hard experiences of life. But humanity as a whole has reached a level so high of sins and offenses that it, it doesn't... It, Probably there's exceptions and all, there's always exceptions for everything. But this is the reason why spiritual rebirth has come to all that are sincere and that want to reach God realization, that want to dedicate themselves exclusively. So in this process, it is divided in two parts and the first part has two parts also. So it is the reconsecration of the temple of the spirit, under brackets, the subtle bodies, 
which is dividing in two parts, deep purification, which is the first, and the first part deals with demons and all, if it is there, and, and all of these consequences. Mm -hmm. So it is deep purification, and the, 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 the heavier aspects of sins. And the second part is regeneration, which is about uh, regenerating all the destruction that was done by sins, by the presence of demons, and all of that. Then the last part, which is shorter, it is uh, the reconsecration of the temple of the body. So it is the same process, but a shorter one. So this is the spiritual rebirth, so that you become again presentable, presentable towards God. So that you have a chance to walk uh, your spiritual path. So this process, I've made it available to all, everybody uh, can access it. It is on the website, srimanarayana.org. So you enter, you can just see a video on spiritual rebirth. You need to create an account to be able to enter it. Uh, because of the sensitivity of the subject, you watch one video, then after finishing that video, you the other one becomes available. It's not all available. I will not put that on YouTube also. So it will be on the website. Everything is there, all the steps. You can do it whenever, wherever you are in this world on your own. I am here and you can uh, come for help. You can ask for help through WhatsApp, whatever means that are available. I will assist as much as possible. And you can also do it here at the ashram under my guidance. You choose. But this is too big to be in an ashram only. So it is available for everyone. Uh, there's no cost in this. So you have everything which is there available. And if you do it in the ashram, you just pay the stay in the ashram. These things, they, they don't have a price because they haven't a price. And for those who don't understand, for example, someone who is in, in this new, new age uh, spirituality, they don't understand the, the, the thing about sins, the importance of it. They don't because of the, the way things have been passed not innocent again and but those who have studied who are probably older maybe or or have taken things to a, another another stage they know the, the importance of sins so this is a lifetime opportunity so people say some people say why did i have to be born in this time where demons are so strong and all of this is happening but also this opportunity that is coming, it's not really accessible in other times. So there's always uh, there's always the other side of it. When something is very bad, there's always big opportunities also. This is why Kali Yuga exists also because it has also big opportunities those who are sincere and seek God realization. The way to achieve it supposedly is easier, but not in this stage as things are today. Not in the level of interferences that exists today. So many of you struggle with your spiritual path, with your attachments, with everything like this, and many of you don't understand why you cannot transcend them. Why can't you dedicate completely in the spiritual path? Those who are distracted, they don't see this. But those who are not distracted, they see this clearly. And they take it as their, well, it's like this. But it isn't, it's because of interference. So, 
there's this issue of access and there is technology which is also used, which is an amplified mechanism of temptation. It's, it's not just a temptation, it's a temptation that is forcing you. And for those who have tried and have experienced intense spiritual practices, they can see this. Ah, maybe our YouTube is coming back. They can see this in the intense attacks. In the intense attacks that they experience. Very intense ones that creates a, a, a lot of inner, inner uh, difficulties. So depression, um, Sometimes it seems that you're, you're starting to lose it. It's like, oh, I'm becoming crazy and all of that uh, because you want something. But then there's a lot of uh, inner, I don't even know how to define that. It's, it's like a mental disturbance, intense mental disturbance is experienced. It's like you're going crazy. So there's many examples of people that come to that come to to a retreat for example and a spiritual retreat an intense one and suicidal thoughts okay so there you go youtube again <laughs> suicidal thoughts or i have to go away or uh or I'm going to die, very, very intense thing, or they just become so anxious, so anxious, they have to stop. So usually it's about stopping, stopping the spiritual practices. This is the goal. So in the spiritual path, in the spiritual path, in spirituality, in spiritual places, demonic influence is by far the stronger that, than in any other place, the stronger. And demons present themselves in a smiling way. Now, through people uh, in, in different levels of, of symbiosis, but it's usually in, a path, in the way that is expected from seekers. Because seekers of truth, maybe not, but yes, many, yes, because there's many that, there's many of you that have a, uh, that are seekers of truth and are completely lost, completely lost. Uh, but those who are trying real hard they are attacked, the, the, the places of spirituality, they are full of these interferences. And like I was explaining, it is presented in, in a way that is in a, a, for a consumer. So the spiritual seeker has become a consumer. So the consumer, they go into a, nest, a restaurant and they look at the environment. Is it nice environment? Isn't it nice? Is it something that, and, and they have, uh, they go in, into a way that things, uh, forget about YouTube. Okay. They go about it in a way that uh, it's completely improper for, for uh, an interaction with a disciple, a seeker, and a master. So, and these relations have become like a, a commercial relation. And in these interferences, demons present themselves in a nice way. They present themselves in, in those who do channelings as angels, light beings and all of this, as smiling people, very nice, beautiful, many times, other times not really, but it doesn't matter. And this is about a collective effort to stop real spiritual endeavors from seekers of truth. 
This is the goal. So if spirits, if your spiritual quest can be stopped, good. Stopped, good. If it cannot, it will be twisted. It will be diverted. So this is the reason why spiritual places are a hotbed of demons and they attack and attack and attack until they can get in. And as, as you look at spirituality, you will see that decades ago, decades ago, the level of sacredness was much higher, much, much, much higher. Now, sacredness is very low. People can only get glimpses of devotion, not uh, floodings of devotion. It doesn't remain for a long, even for those that taste a little bit. Majority are closed. They cannot even say the word God. They say consciousness, the universe, and they have a problem with the world God. So if you look, you will see the majority of you, you have a problem with the word God. You say it's about religions, it's about this and that, but it isn't because that is the workings of men, this species. But it is a problem with the word of God and that is because of the presence of demons. So in this, this accessing your bodies, there's something which is a process of symbiosis that happens which is the host starts getting the, the feelings and the perceptions and everything of the parasite and vice versa, vice versa also. So, so imagine if you start chanting a mantra with devotion, dedicating your God, to God and demons are accessing your body, well, if it is for five minutes, one hour, two hours, maybe nothing happens. But if it is for 10 days, 10 hours a day, maybe something can happen. Not always, because there are different levels of things and they can move in and out. But in a process like this, they don't have a stand a chance. They have to reveal themselves because it becomes painful for them. And as it becomes painful for them, it becomes painful for you because of this connection, this symbiosis. So people start making intense practices and they become agitated and anxious and nervous. And I don't like that mantra and all of this. This happens a lot. It's very common. Because that brings pain to demons. So this is why when these forces are present, you cannot move into your spiritual path. You cannot even dedicate to your spiritual path. There are those who can, but there are those that cannot. And they dream about it. They really want it, but they cannot. They, 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 are not in, they are inadequate. They cannot do it. They are weak. They are this. A lot of things in their minds. Because your mind becomes not yours anymore. When demons access your body, they access your emotions, they access your thoughts, they know you better, they know you better than you know yourself. And this is about mind games, energetic games, all about this, and taking you to more, to, to more demons, more sins. And as a person has demons with it, this is, you will love this part. If you have demons, and you have a sexual relationship with someone else. Demons will have the right to move to that person. You have created a soul connection, bad one. And they have the right to go to, into the other person. So, and this is this, the, the spirituality as a whole. It is going around all of this. And for this reason, uh, it does not it does not stand a chance so far so this the, the the growth for example i don't know if they are here those who have been in the past in these satsangs but if they are not probably they will see or not but for them i'm sure that in this last almost two years nothing much has changed and i'm not talking about the the circumstances of life real spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. So 
exclusive devotion, liberation, all of this. It doesn't change much. The world continues to spin because if you're not in pain, if you're not being destroyed in some way, you're an instrument. Meaning, you go through spiritual places, meeting people, giving your example of this shallow super, uh, spirituality, mingling with others sexually and all of that, and you're passing their network, doing their work, because even by your example, you are directing others to the same, to the same path. So, if you're not food, you're an instrument, and it's better to be food, because being an instrument has different consequences. So. Another aspect which is important to, to mention, I'm just throwing these things here. Probably I will continue doing these satsangs, not sure yet. And if there's questions, of course, we will talk about it. And the way to... I missed what I was saying and that's more important. <clears throat> so one of the aspects which is very important about this is that if demons access your bodies, perceiving or not, you become a slave. And that slavery doesn't end with the death of the physical body. It continues. It continues. And if you have demons and you have a child, that demon will have the right to pass towards your, ch your child and to the children of your children, and the children of the children of your children, and so on, making a line, a curse line through generations, because a human life is like a chicken life to a human. Human life is very short, the life of demons is very long, and a demon, when, can, when it has power over your body, in some way when it has access then it will access those who are connected with you it will move through them and starts attacking them bringing situations for them so that they go into more sins drugs alcohol uh, promiscuity all these things there's a big list of it so that they continue to have more access and they spread through generations after generations and it doesn't end with the death of the physical body. Only God can cut these connections. But for God to cut these connections, you will need to show him that you are serious and that you really want to follow, to seek God realization exclusively and no more playing around with your time. There are many, many aspects about this, which I think I will end it in a while, unless there are questions, but it's such a, it's such even a weird subject for the times that people are living, for their uh, context, that people listen to this and it becomes just, what? But yes, so, all the satsangs that I've made some years ago, I, I, there was one or two that I mentioned a little bit about demons, but I had nothing to bring as uh, it was not the time yet to do something about it. But I was giving instruction. So people found it strange the way I talked very strict and because this attitude is needed so that you that you can go beyond this with your free will so i was teaching indirectly but now it's time for spiritual rebirth everything is here i've prepared everything this all the structure so first there's a series that explains everything about the spiritual rebirth and it is uh, 
it is being brought by Sri Narasimha Dev, that God manifestation which is in this represented in this image. And I've, I've explained it through uh, one of the parts of this spiritual rebirth. One of the parts was available in this world a long time ago. And you can see it. There's a, there's a, a set of teachings of Jesus from the Essen Book of, Essen Book of Peace. Essen Gospel of Peace. So there, those little teachings which are there that has been read and read and read for so many people and no, no one really understood what was there. That is the description of the, of the reconsecration of the temple of the body. Of the temple of the spirit was not available. But this one was and it was not available because it was not needed. We have gone past that in a long time so that only that one is not enough and if you look around in the state that the world is television what is entertainment all of this and you will see demonic influence everywhere everywhere if you're paying attention if not okay no problem so Spiritual rebirth, it's not about convincing you about anything. It's about an opportunity being extended. Those who can, they will grab it. So this was assembled in this way with Sri Narasimha and also with the teachings of Jesus so that both, both East and West may have an opportunity. So in the, in the, in the West, uh, those who will see Jesus may have an opportunity, but they will have a problem with Narasimha Dev. It's not a very uh, easy energy to deal with, but on the other way around, there is no merit in this world for spiritual rebirth. It is divine blessing. So it will have many challenges for everyone. So they will have problems with Sri Narasimha Dev. From the East, they will not have problems with Sri Narasimha Dev. Neither they will have problems with uh, Jesus, but they will have problems with, there's so much spiritual teachings that they think they have all, everything is there. And from what I've seen, of course, there are exceptions, very strong and beautiful exceptions. But the majority of seekers from there, they are so overwhelmed with spiritual teachings, it became uh, random. It's like, I, 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 reverence is lacking, or the reverence that comes, and they take everything that, it's, everything is the same. I remember a sentence, probably you're listening to this, and someone that I said, go and see the videos when they, came, they come, because it's important for you, still hasn't entered, you haven't seen nothing yet. And this is someone that has been interacting for a long time. And I said, but have you watched any of the videos? Not from spiritual birth, others. He says, no, because we have this here in India, we have this teaching, like everything is the same. Well, let me tell you something, if you're listening. Spiritual rebirth for all that are listening doesn't exist in this world. It didn't exist in this world. And if you have a doubt about what I'm saying, go check it out. As you are seeing the spiritual rebirth, I, I advise you to pick up a mantra, not a simha mantra. That would be good for you to chant so that you may continue to see. Because where there's this, there's a lot of interfer interferences, electric problems. See, YouTube crashed and came back again. And I'm very surprised that Instagram is still holding on. But it's all of this. So you will find probably many problems in, in entering, in accessing, in seeing the context. Then your life 
a lot of things start happening so that you don't go and see. So there's a lot of things. Sleep, intense sleep. So there's a, a sleep which is has a demonic signature. You go for meditation and you just sleep, sleep. And you even fall down and down. This is clearly, clearly, they are there. This is one. There's many, many signs, many signs, many signs. But usually it's for those who are uh, striving or trying to strive or depending on their level of, of calling. And then at the same time that there's resistance on their spiritual efforts, obstacles, difficulties, barriers, strong ones, there is, things are made easier for sins, for uh, moving around, for all the nice goody-goody things and diverting from the spiritual path. So some things are made very easy and others are made very difficult, very difficult. So this was a short uh, talk about spiritual rebirth. Again, if you want to check it out, check it. If you don't, don't. So it is in the website, shrimanarayana.org. You will find that website easily. And everything is there. So we'll, you'll have a first video, which is a presentation. Then you have to create an account. <coughs> Then you will access the videos. There's a lot of videos. I, I explain everything in detail. Still have to put some things more into the 30 days because observing this uh, process closely with more people, it was clear that uh, extra, extra things have to come. So I will make that upgrade. But nobody has reached those. 30 days yet, so I still have time. And like I said, those who want to make it here in the ashram, the first one open to the, to the people from outside is on the 15th of July. So 15th of July will be the first spiritual rebirth. You will have to remain the 77 days. <clears throat> it's just a period, doesn't matter. You cannot, it doesn't count. Uh, it, it, it's not even it's even pointless to do that because there's the removal of demons then they try to come back and they continue to come back and they have to push them away again and so this is very uh, exhaustive and there's a big process of learning with all of this learning about all of these things how it works how it comes back and uh, the cares that you need to be what is involved? Where are the demons coming from? Where are the connections that need to be cut? There's a lot of things. So 77 days. To do it here, I, it has, you have to stay the full 77 days. There's no cost for it apart from the staying in the ashram. And if you cannot pay, well, we will accommodate you, of course. It can only take time because to be able to bring this, uh, the ashram, it was not easy. So we are having some difficulties, but going, going. And we are supporting also the retreats on donation of 10 days, intense meditation for those who are serious. And when you pass the filter on seriousness, just a few come. And usually those who come, they don't have a lot of, they don't make much of a contribution some do fortunately but it's not and we close the ashram so to receive you without paying it's not easy but we'll do our level best to accommodate everyone that needs so those who can pay will help others that can't also but we will receive all that needed when we have conditions for it hmm? but we will accommodate all that need and want and have the seriousness for that process so because 
this is not a joke and it's not a service that is being offered. It is a sacred process and it is to be done with seriousness. If not, I will ask to leave. And even to do it here, we will have to have a personal conversation to see if it makes sense or not. Because this is not, not something to play around. And even by being here during the process, it's for you to be, to be introspective, not to be talking around and this and that. This is not, uh, this is a sacred process. Again, if there's demons, it will be worked out according to how sincere you are. If there are not, if there's no demons, sins will be erased. Again, if you are sincere in your repentance, of course, and then you will see that your spiritual path will go much quicker. After spiritual rebirth, there's something else which I'm still preparing, which is spiritual ascension. So this will be shared much later because to participate in that, spiritual rebirth is needed. There's no point in going to spiritual ascension without going to spiritual rebirth. So if there's doubts about this, you can put there, I will answer now, or else I will finish. I could spend the whole day talking about this here, but I think for one, for one day it is more than enough. So I'll wait just a few moments for this. There's the WhatsApp number here. Usually I put it here on the comments, but I forgot because uh, it's a long time I've, do, I've done this and well it was more or less improvised but there's the whatsapp number that you can use to send your questions you will find it on the you will find it on the on the website as you create your account you enter there's a whatsapp button there which comes directly to me okay there's something here Well, when a devotee approaches you seeking conversation about spiritual and non-spiritual matters. Well, first of all, I don't have interest in non-spiritual matters. That's the first thing. But I don't know, maybe words are complicated. Maybe this is not... Uh, if you want to send the, the, your question to, to, to WhatsApp, I receive it here and it's more private. Well, if you want to discuss a few things with me, okay. If it is uh, about your spiritual path, about spiritual teachings, about spiritual rebirth, whatever. Of course, non-spiritual matters, I don't see a point for that. You were writing something else, probably, so I'll just wait a little bit if someone else has any questions. But you can... You can... Um, send your questions to WhatsApp, not just here on during satsang, but some other time, and I will answer. I will answer them depending on what kind of subject it is, because sometimes it is really certain things that, well, there's not, not, not a point even in entering the conversation, but if it is serious, it doesn't matter the, the kind of a doubt that it is. I will answer, no problem. Hmm? Aha, uh -huh, wait, now internet is falling, crashing. <laughs> saved? Yes, saved in time, 1% for, for it to crash. So just waiting a little bit more if there's more questions. But I suggest those who, are, who have interest to check it. I understand that the information that I've brought you may seem very... There's many, many words to describe it. Uh, not all good. I understand that. And this is one of the things about spiritual rebirth. It comes to challenge all beliefs. So in a way, those who will be able to go through spiritual rebirth is not all that are in spirituality, but all those who can move 
beyond their beliefs about the world, themselves, spiritual path, and all of this, because it will be challenging in a way. The information about it, you will feel in your heart. You will feel it. Uh, you will probably fear it also, because not knowing about this, it's also, um, it's also good in a way, because for those who, who say that ignorance is bliss, but ignorance is suffering, misery, and sansar, which is a synonym of the previous described. So, but you will feel it, you will understand everything which is being explained, and you will see in your life how these things are playing. Hmm? So, I've made even a video about signs of the presence. But again, I'm talking about this, but the biggest opportunity, the real opportunity in spiritual rebirth is the opportunity of your sins being erased, your sins and your offenses. This takes lives and lives and lives and lives of it that you have to reincarnate. If you didn't create more sins, which you do. So it's an endless cycling of cycle of suffering. So this is the main part. The, the, the part of demons is an, an adjunct, a very important adjunct for the majority of today. Fortunately, is like this, but still an adjunct. It's not the, the, the goal of it. Because the real seeker of truth is not bothered about demons. They may be there and harassing and disturbing things, but they are focused in God alone, in God alone. But if there's sins and if there's demons, then even just with, with sins, and if there's offense, if there's offenses, your prayers are not listened. So this is one of the reasons why demons push you towards offenses to create a complete distance from God. There's no such thing as a complete distance, but there are laws in place in this universe and everybody is under them. Okay, so it seems that... Hmm? It seems that there's no more questions, so you can write anything else. So I will uh, finish this satsang. So welcome all. Um, if you felt some of this in your heart, check it out. I advise you to, all of you to check it out because it is an opportunity for all, but an opportunity uh, can may or may not be received depending on a lot of factors. So one thing that you need to understand differently that from what from what is that the the perception of the of the majority because the perception of the majority in new age spirituality is that we are all deserving we are all light and that is true of course and but because of sins and offenses, merit has been exhausted a long time. But even so, a blessing is there with the name of spiritual rebirth, but not all will be able to access that blessing because of your own beliefs, because of the way of, of you receiving it. It is there available. You just have to create an account, see it, feel it, understand it, and make your, make your mind to do it. You will have all the help that it is possible in, in, in a distance and personally also, but it is your path and your process. So you will, the, the opportunity is there for all, but not all will be able to, to go through it because of your free will with your ideas and all of that. So my advice is go and check it out, but do as you please. Okay, so I'm not sure if next week I will continue at this time to do the, to do online satsang, 
to talk about this because really, frankly speaking, uh, I stopped the previous satsangs because they were pointless in the sense that I covered everything from A to Z. I wasn't seeing any change around, any growth that, that we can say, no, no, this is worth in while. I would just, I was just, in a sense, uh, being another, another voice just in your distraction world. And I don't want that. So now I've prepared one year and a half, almost two years. I have no idea about the time, but more or less that. I prepared something that gives you a real opportunity for those who really want to see God exclusively and not, are not being able. So now there is spiritual rebirth. There is something concrete that can be done for everyone. So I've come to talk about it. And if I come back, it's to talk about this and to talk about the process and doubts that you may have and all of this to keep a record so that those in the future who are doing spiritual rebirth, they can uh, see these informations wherever they are in the world because everything helps. And that will be the reason. If there's no questions, then probably I'll do this once, twice more, and then I will stop again and just concentrate on those who are doing the process. So um, that's it for today. And whatever questions you may want to ask, you can do it through WhatsApp. And I will answer. Don't worry about, because sometimes I have these questions, oh, but uh, there's a lot that I, I need to write. You can write it in WhatsApp. You can send an audio in WhatsApp if it is English, Portuguese. Yes, if it is under language, then, then you need to translate it. Then it will be French, it's still easier. I understand a little bit. And there's a resident here which is, uh, which speaks French natively, na as a native tongue. So that can be uh, improved. The rest will use translator. That's, what, that's how it is. And so hello Shiva. So I don't know if you're on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, I will not disconnect here. If you're not, then I will disconnect and continue through WhatsApp. So probably this was just to say hello. So for all of you, again, this was a, it was not a rehearsed. There was some notes I've taken somewhere that I wanted to speak about. But it didn't, didn't happen, so it came as it came. And apart from this, the website, everything is there. I've prepared everything so that you can access it from whatever place you are in this world. And this is a sacred process, but you need to understand that. If you're doing it, wherever you are doing it, you are doing it with God. With God and angels and all of this, these presences that will be around and demons also. Even if there are no demons, they don't like this and they will try to disrupt as much as possible. So wherever you are in the world, the support is there. I will be here supporting also. So there's no reason not to do it. And if you want to come here, well, there will be next, the next process here or the first open to the outside will be on the 15th of July this year. Okay. Mario, Mario. Now, how do I disconnect this? Okay. 